It's been a whirlwind couple of weeks for me personally on the work front, but it's also been an exciting time for a few properties full of iconic character designs that I really appreciate. The thing about them is, I realized why I'm sort of lumping them together mentally, despite the fact that they aren't that related. I'm talking about Toy Story 4, recently released in theaters, the remake of Crash Team Racing, Nitro Fueled, and the reveal of Banjo-Kazooie for Smash DLC. What ties them together though, and what nuggets of character design insight can we glean from them? Okay, so obviously all three of these things are recreations or continuations of things from the late 90s. Am I just excited to revisit favorite things from my childhood? Well, of course. Toy Story was, I think, the first film I ever saw in theaters. And my parents and I rented a PlayStation 1 from Blockbuster for a weekend and played Crash Team Racing nonstop. And I always loved the Banjo-Kazooie designs and aesthetic, playing them at friends' houses. But it's not just Brooke's nostalgia that threads these three things together. Nostalgia is an engine firing at full speed today. Few franchises from the last few decades have yet to feel the churn of new installments, reboots, and remasters. In character design, we're often very concerned about what gets updated or changed with new iterations and entries in a franchise. After all, characters are designed for a purpose. And if the context and purpose changes from a 16-bit sprite moving sideways on the screen to a third-person view in a 3D world, that purpose has fundamentally changed. This is always the point where a designer's metal is tested. What will they add or take away? What things will get complicated or remain preserved? What's so interesting about these three franchises, though, is the jump isn't from 2D to 3D. It's from 3D to 3D. Two-dimensional drawings have been around for hundreds of years, and the cartoon, or comic as we know them, have been around for at least a hundred. Disney perfected a certain formula for appeal as we know it in 2D animated media, and it's been refined over time. 3D as a medium, however, is much younger. Toy Story was the first 3D animated feature film, and these games were each on the respective first 3D home consoles. Not only is 3D a young medium, it's a volatile one. Its progress has for a long time been inherently tied to computer power and software becoming faster and more optimized. The character designers on each of these projects was working under intense limitations back then. They needed to turn low poly counts of triangles into round, appealing characters. With Banjo, they used all the resources they had to create spherical shapes and supplemented with bold colors and shading maps that drew attention away from the polygonal edges. Crash was just a big triangle boy. Triangles all over. With a character like Bo Peep, there's more power available since her appearance is pre-rendered instead of real time. But limits to the overall geometry mean that most of her facial features are painted on. Any material that has the appearance of fabric, like the sleeves, are simply geometry, given a fabric texture and then deformed where possible. Realistic cloth physics were still a ways away, thus the use of a rigid hoop skirt that can hang outside any place that would normally react to body movement. And it instead has a subtle squash and stretch as she moves. From a narrative perspective too, Bo Peep is far from an integral character. She interacts with Woody a few times, but doesn't need to be highly expressive and mobile to accomplish her purpose within the story. Now while 2019 gives a return to form for all these characters, things haven't been completely silent on all fronts. Bo Peep received minor updates in Toy Story 2, Crash went through multiple iterations through various installments of new games, and Banjo-Kazooie received an odd redesign that lacked appeal and seemed to be made for gamers in their adult years that wouldn't be caught dead playing something too cute. While some of these decisions are subjective, it does show what could be done when updating a character to fit their newer limitations. Sometimes, a little too easily, designers will default to making the character simply more realistic, as though the only thing keeping this cartoon bear wearing yellow shorts and a backpack from being a realistic grizzly was the hardware limitations of the Nintendo 64. There is a place for some additional details like these. We've seen the materials and textures of things like cloth and surfaces on Mario and the more recent Toy Story characters getting increasingly realistic. The Lego Movie led a lot of people to think that it was actually stop-motion animated instead of meticulously computer-generated with high-definition scratches and surfacing. But it is important to know what the intention of the original designer was. If you looked at the Banjo-Kazooie N64 model and literally interpreted its sharp, jagged edges, you may actually literally translate that into extremely square shape language throughout the redesign. The conceit of what if it was real 
is just not as clever as we're sometimes led to believe. More potential detail does not mean we have to translate simplified designs into something more realistic. As I've mentioned before, while it is impressive and different, something like the Lion King remake is by no means an improved or better version of the original film. That's why I really have to sing the praises of both the Bo Peep upgrade and the Smash version of Banjo. Details have been added to enhance the expression and fidelity of the characters, but not necessarily make them more realistic, and I think that's important. Bo Peep gets something of a Disney princess treatment in order to be a bit more expressive. I don't have a problem with the changes here, as it was necessary for her to carry more dramatic and emotional weight for Toy Story 4. Even the textures and topology around the creases of her hair appear more like handcrafted porcelain. She's also given dimensional eyelids over top the eyes, and a bit more appeal in the structure of her face, mostly through an increase in the diameter of her eyes, more interplay between the hair shapes, a slight drop in the position of the nose, and a larger overall head. The changes are executed really well, and I'm sure that for the majority of the movie-going audience, the change isn't even recognizable. You either need a fairly good memory, or a recent rewatch of the original, or a side-by-side -side comparison. It seems like, with updates to characters like this, whether it's from medium to medium, or an increase in what's possible like 3D, the goal isn't to improve or redesign simply for the sake of making something new, or more clever, or especially not more realistic. It's to find the fine line between updating to fit a current context, and the characters resembling them the way that you remembered them back then. Banjo does this as well. For the key art render, the bear and bird follow in the footsteps of old, rare renders of the characters, with updated fur and geometry. In-game, Sakurai translated the classic shapes of these characters into rounder, similarly appealing silhouettes. One detail that I appreciate is the hair floof on Banjo's head in-game, being a sort of round teardrop, which reads perfectly well at a distance, and it also echoes the hair shape on Kazooie's head. Now, both Banjo and Toy Story follow a design aesthetic that's not too dissimilar from that classic Disney style. So, how do things fare for Crash and the gang? Well, all things considered, this is a faithful update to the character, but for better and for worse. It actually comes with some caveats. See, there's an inconsistency to the character since the beginning. Promotional art and in-game versions of the character have extremely different facial features and structure. It actually starts to make sense that Crash was redesigned so many times on his trip between development studios. There are problems with the original Crash. Plus, as we've talked about before, Crash is designed to be modern and trendy, not classic. And so the context of modern changes with time. The side effect of this is that both the promotional art and in-game versions of Crash seem to have been updated, up remastered independently of each other. They each take the next logical step in disparate of paths from the original in-game and promotional art. Sometimes Crash is almost all orange, lanky and thin with streamlined features. In promotional art, the taper of his body is much more extreme. His mouth and lips are distinctly constructed separate from the body, almost like a muzzle. The shape and even perspective of the muzzle changes wildly, and his hair, eyes, and eyebrows change constantly. Removed of that though, the transition from old 3D to new 3D is handled nicely. Those hard polygonal edges actually make an appearance in strategic places. The best analog that I can make is to the hard-angled character designs of the Madagascar series. Rotating a character like Polar shows hard edges around the muzzle, but plenty of rounding in other places. They've also utilized a small amount of fur texture to the characters that it makes sense to add it to, which makes for a graceful transition between old hard polygons that appeared fuzzy on old CRT TVs and newer resolutions that leave less to the imagination. The approach seems to be a rather literal remake of the original, and it works. 20 years later, what was once a modern set of design principles has circled around to being oddly nostalgic. Now that the remakes of the better Crash games Twin Sanity notwithstanding, are out, I do really hope that we can find some sort of middle ground with Crash. The restrictions of the PS1 just aren't there anymore. Times have changed too. And I think it's time that Crash was boiled down and redesigned once and for all to find a place amongst the classic characters without losing his edge. I've made alternate takes on Crash in the past that I'd love to revisit sometimes, but I think the core Crash design just needs a little more polish. And for the love of all that is good, some consistency. Hand your artists one model sheet to work from. I'm begging you. Okay, that's all the time I've got. 
I gotta get back to beating Entropy's lap times in Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled on my PlayStation 4 3DS. You can keep my forge burning over on Patreon, where I have some really exciting changes planned soon, and you can keep up with me at Bagel Denizen on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. Thank you so much for watching, and have fun creating.